الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك وحبيبك سيدنا محمد So this is our second lesson in fiqh Last time we talked about kitab al-tahara The chapter of tahara But last time I think we didn't record From this lesson we'll try to record it live for everyone So this is the second lesson which is, we'll start with Kitab al-Salah. The method of this lesson, we just go with the chapters in fiqh, the main chapters. We try to highlight the main issues which every Muslim face, and we try to highlight the, the, major, the opinion of majority ulama. And I will take half of this session and half of the session is yours. You will ask questions like last time. As you noticed last time, if you ask me some thing, I said this is the madhab of Malikiyah, the madhab of Ahnaf. I intended to, to highlight the madhab in this lesson for one reason. We live in a city that we are from different madhab. And it's very important for all of us to know that that another opinion or that other person is follow a very famous madhab from madhab arba'a because then we will know each other more and will excuse each other also that's very very important and last time also we end with a question that what is even madhab so I'll give short introduction to madhab then we'll go to the chapter of Salah. Madhahib is come from Madhab. Madhahib is a plural. Singular is Madhab. Madhab is a way, linguistically, a way of what? Of, a way of thinking and interpretation. Madhahib is a methodology to understand Quran and Sunnah. Some may ask, but why they are Madhahib? We just want to follow Quran and Sunnah. Some people, they thought madhahib is something different and Quran or Sunnah is something different. This is misunderstanding. The old madhahib fiqh, Hanafi, Maliki, Shafi, Hanbali, is all derived from Quran and Sunnah. It's just a methodology to understand Quran or Sunnah. Then you will ask again, but why we need it? Everyone can go to Quran and Sunnah and extract the hukum. That's not true. Because Quran and Sunnah need a high level of understanding. Even in the time of Sahaba, not the old Sahaba, they can derive the hukum from Quran and Sunnah. There is always ulama sahaba scholars among Sahaba, which other Sahaba go and ask the ulama of Sahaba. So you may ask, okay, why we don't go to the Sahaba straight away? This Madahib, Maliki, Shafi, Hanafi, Hanbali, it just derived also from many Madahib of Sahaba. You need to understand something. Quran and Sunnah, when Allah Taala revealed the Quran to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi say many ahadith, and these Sahaba attend this revelation and they attend a hadith. And regardless all of this, they have differences. Why? Why Sahaba has different opinions where they all of them, they attend the revelation? In this lesson, we can't go deep for this masala, but very briefly, there's many reasons. The first reason is, some Sahaba, they attend the all, every single dars of the Prophet Some of them, they don't. So some of them miss some of this knowledge. That's reason number one. Reason number two, if both all the Sahaba attend the lessons, they all attend, their understanding are different. We as human beings, we have different understanding. Some of us, Allah give them deep understanding. Some of them less than that, less than that. And Sahaba not exception. Abdullah ibn Abbas, Prophet 
Make dua for him. Allahumma faqihu fi din wa allimhu ta'wil. In time of Umar, Umar allowed Abdullah ibn Abbas to attend the majlis of Umar. That time he was very young boy. But he, have, he has a deep understanding, more than many eldest of Sahaba. So reason number two, different understanding. Reason number three, the interpretation itself. Quran is in Arabic language, in high level in Arabic. And in Arabic language, a one word can have two different meaning. And this different meaning can cause two opinions between Sahaba themselves, not just Madahib, Sahaba themselves. For example, if Allah said, Awla mastumun nisa, some of the people take it literally. La mastum, it means touch the woman. Then, as a madhab shafi'i, if you touch a woman, your wudu is invalid. The rest of, of madhahib said, no, this is not literally. This is when that private relationship between spouses happen. But Arabic language is very deep. That's one example also. So they can both attend, but different understanding. Another also reason, some of them can attend the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ and travel to his, to his village. And then that hukum, Prophet ﷺ changed the hukum. So he still narrate the first hukum. He didn't know that it's changed. And this happened also between Sahaba. There is many reasons and there is a specific books just talk about this issue. The main point here is Sahaba themselves, they have different opinions and they don't have any problem for these opinions. I'll give you one example. One day, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, one of the greatest Sahaba and big alim of ulama al Sahaba. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud was in Mina in the season of Hajj. And Uthman ibn Abfan was the Khalifa. In the time of Salah come, Uthman pray four rak'ah instead of two rak'ah. So Abdullah ibn Mas'ud taught his students, he has a lot of students, that Prophet وسلم, Abu Bakr and Umar, they just pray two, not four. But now Uthman pray for. Uthman, Uthman has an, another reason. Then when Salah come, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud go and pray behind Uthman. And he didn't say anything. His students surprised. They come to him. But you said that this is not right. How can you pray behind Uthman? I said, he said, if any difference between opinions, I will lift the salah, then how can the ummah become together? Inna al-khilaf shar. Khilaf shar. It's not good. If you have different opinions, leave this masjid. I will not pray with that masjid. They don't say amin loudly. I will not pray with that masjid. They pray asr very late. I will not pray with that masjid. That's not good. This is opinions long time ago between sahaba. And they live with it because all these opinions are details, still details. They don't have differences in the main fundamental thing in Islam. They all emphasize the importance of salah, the arkan of salah, and the differences is details still. If you read this loudly, secretly, put your hand here, here, it's still details. But it's good to know, then you know that group of people follow a very profound imam. That's the main purpose of here. The last question here is, do I have to follow a madhab, which many people ask? I would say, if you are a layman, you are not a student of knowledge, then what you have to do is to go to someone you trust in knowledge and piety in ilm and taqwa and ask him any mas'ala it come across in your life. Just ask him. However, 
if you want to seek knowledge, it's better and highly recommended to go and choose one madhab and start with this. Why? Because this is a very clear click curriculum. Many ulama, they made a lot of books in this madhab. And it's better to choose the madhab that is dominant in your country or your community. Study that madhab if you are a student of knowledge. If not, just ask anyone you trust in ilm and taqwa. That's very brief. And if there is anything else in a Q&A session, inshallah, we'll. So we start today with Kitab al-Salah. After Tahara last time, we talk about Salah. The first thing we mention in Salah is the significance of Salah. Significance of Salah. If you are a Muslim, you have to pray. Very, very important. Salah is the connection between us and our Lord. If our body need three meals day and night, our soul need five meals at least. If this soul don't have this connection, it will feel something you can't imagine. You will feel empty. That's the importance of salah. And when Allah wa ta revealed salah to the Prophet وسلم, revealed in the first revelations, in Al-Muddathir, in Al-Muzzammil, in Al-Fatiha, Al-Qalam, which is the first revelation, salah come from the first time. And in the beginning, salah was for 10 years, there is no five prayers in Mecca for 10 years or more. Just two rak'ah in the morning, two rak'ah in the evening. However, Qiyamul Layl is from the first revelation. Why? Because Qiyamul Layl is build a good connection with your Lord. When it's at night, everyone is sleeping. And you left your bed in the sake of Allah, this is grow or increase the love of Allah. After 10 years, after the year of sadness, the year of grief, Allah invited his Prophet to amazing journey. Rihlatul Isra'i wal Mi'raj. In that journey, he make salawat al khams, the five prayers obligatory to his Prophet. Pause here and reflect. Five prayers. Allah didn't just send a revelation for that. He invited his prophet to that place, to Sidrat al Muntaha. In another word, if you pray, your soul will go in a journey like journey of Mi'raj. Your soul will go to a journey to Sidrat al Muntaha. Just to highlight the importance of the five prayers. And when he come back, in the morning, he told the people, the, the disbelievers, they don't agree with that. In Salatul Dhuhr, Salatul Dhuhr is the first Salah Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi pray from Salawatul Khams. That's why in some hadith called as Salatul Ula, the first Salah. In Salatul Dhuhr, something happened. Jibril came down to the earth to teach the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the timetable of Salah. Can you imagine? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he pray next to Al-Kaaba. He is Ma'mum. The Imam is Jibril. Nobody can see Jibril except Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, maybe in, 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 in human form. But Jibreel is the Imam and Prophet is the Ma'mum. This is the first hadith in Muwatta al Imam Malik. And then he pray 10 prayers, two days. He prays Salatul Dhuhr in the beginning time, Salatul Asr in the first day in the beginning time, Maghrib in the beginning time, Isha in the beginning time, Fajr in the beginning time. How many prayers now? Five. That's the first day. And then he come the next day in Salatul Dhuhr, he pray this time in the second day, in the end of the time of Dhuhr. Asr, in near the end of the time. Maghrib, in the same time. And Isha, either in the third of night or in the half of night, depending to the narration. So why this? To highlight the importance of time. So brothers and sisters, 
is not just prayer. It's prayer on time. Very, very important. Many Muslims nowadays, Fajr, they don't set their alarm to Salatul Fajr. However, they set their alarm, alarm, alarms to their work, school, university. This is dangerous. Inna salata kanat ala al-mu'minina kitaban munquta on time. If you pray Salatul Fajr every single day and you intend that after sun rising, this is a major sin. This is a major sin. It's different if you can't wake up one day, two days, that's fine. But if you don't, not in your intention to wake up to Fajr, that's a big problem. So on time is very important. So Jibril teach him. Then also another story of Salah when Prophet ﷺ came to Medina one day after Duha, he then, Prophet ﷺ, say to his companions, he will pray to Raka on the mimbar. Just him. He said to them, Look at me. I will pray on the mimbar. Why? He wants to show them the best way for Salah. So he made ruku' on the mimbar, sujood on the mimbar, everything on the mimbar, and said, Innama fa'altu hadha, aradtu an ta'allamu salati. I want you to, I want to teach you the proper salah. That's the importance of salah. Second mas'ala here, that's why if someone, a Muslim, he prays sometimes and sometimes left salah, some Muslims, they just come to Jumu'ah. In the rest of the week, they don't pray. Are they still Muslim or not? That's the famous mas'ala between ulama. Majority of scholars, majority of scholars, Hanafi, Maliki, Shafi'i, they said, yes, he's still a Muslim with one condition. If he didn't deny that salah is obligatory. If he says salah is not even obligatory, he's not Muslim anymore. Because salah should every single Muslim know it's obligatory. Unless he is a new Muslim, didn't know that. That's another issue. But he said, I don't care about salah. I don't believe that salah even is. But if he believes that salah is obligatory, but out of laziness, we pray sometimes just Jumu'ah. The majority of opinion is still a Muslim. However, this is one of the major sins. This is dangerous. There is no connection with his Lord. How can he seek rizq, seek help, seek ma'una in this dunya when he don't have salah in his day, daily life? A'udhu billah. May Allah Taala protect us and make all of us min al-muhafidina ala salah. The third mas'ala here is mawaqit, timetable, which Jibreel taught the Prophet Some people, they say, we go to some masajid, especially Asian people, they pray asr very late. Some people, they thought, oh, they don't know anything. It's very obvious why they pray asr late. That's not true. They know very well. We have many big scholars in Asian community. Big, big scholars. Dedicate their time, their life, just for deen of Allah. Just for Quran. They study Bukhari and Muslim al kutub al sitta They study Fiqh al-Hanafi very well. They're not ignorant. This is the madhab of Abu Hanifa, long time ago. Imam Abu Hanifa believed that Asr time start a bit late. Why? That's advanced. If you are a talib of ilm, then I will tell you what's the adilla, what's the proof, what's... But he has a proof that this is the strongest opinion according to him. So in this type of issue, we should remember... If the big ulama, like this madahib, has this different, we should respect the other opinion. Respect by say, that's the madhab which is very 
profound madhab. If you don't pr want to pray there, it's up to you. But don't think this is out of jahl. Not at all. Second, to come together as a mu'mineen, this is obligatory. One of the foundation of deen. To just hate each other by this masail, which the old ulama has difference, this is musibah. This is the ignorance now. The jahl is to make big issues from this masail, which all ulama, in the past, they live with this. Another thing also in mawaqit, which is salatul fajr. Hanafi madhab is the same of other madhab, start with the same. However, in Hanafi madhab, it's better, it's better to pray fajr late. And they have a hadith, which the other scholars agree with that, but they have different interpretation of the hadith. Hadith is in Abu Dawood, Tirmidhi, Nasai, Ibn Majah, Asfiru bil fajr, fa innahu a'adhamu lil ajr. Pray fajr late, this is more reward to you. They agree it's authentic, but they have different interpretation. Some of them said it means make a long salah. Start with the early time till you reach that. However, that's not my issue. My issue is to respect that other opinion and to know this is one of the four profound madahab, which is Hanafi, Shafi'i, Maliki, Hanbali. And by the way, Madhab al Hanbali is the most dominant Madhab in history because it's go to area where the majority of Muslims are. And also it's the official Madhab of the Uthmani Empire. That's why it's become dominant. That's for Mawaqeet. Now, if someone come from school and he can't pray Zuhur at school, we said time is very important. Try to pray on time. If you can pray at school, that's brilliant. You should ask your, if you are adult, you should ask your teachers, I need to pray, I need place. Because our deen is very simple. You can pray any place. Any place. You don't have to need a mosque or even prayer room. You can pray anything. Just your mat and pray. If you can't, then when you come, don't forget. As important as your food and lunch, prayer is very important. In this issue, if you sleep, long sleep, and then you left this waqt of salah. You sleep before Maghrib and you wake up after Isha. The time of Maghrib gone now. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Just immediately pray. There's another masail you will ask me, inshallah, an issue. That's for mawaqit. Another thing for mawaqit, salah is, is have some salah fard, which is these five prayers, and jumu'ah for adults. And there is some salawat, which is fard kifaya. We'll talk about that later, not this lesson. And there is nawafil. Today we just focus on these five prayers. Five prayers. Is it obligatory for a Muslim to pray for the man, for every man, to pray every salah on the mosque? There's a consensus that definitely it's a highly recommended, highly recommended to pray at mosque. But is it obligatory every single salah? That's two opinions. When I mention opinions, don't get me wrong to think that salah in the masjid is not important. No. But the mas'ala here is, if someone left one salah and prayed at home, did he commit a sin or not? That's the mas'ala. You should understand it in this way. Every single alim said, go to the masjid. This is many ahadith that Prophet Sallallahu told us the importance of masjid. But ulama discuss another mas'ala. If a man, for he went three times, 
But two of salah, he pray at home. Did he commit a sin or not? That's the mas'ala. It means, does every single salah, he should go to the mosque? So all of them say it's highly recommended. However, Hanabila said it's wajib for him every single salah. And the rest of Madahib said it's highly, highly recommended. So in this case, try, if you are a man, to pray as much as you can in the mosque. If there is something happen, then it will be a fine. But try, if you want to come in the day of judgment and have a high reward to be with your Prophet wasallam, don't miss any salat in the mosque. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, من سره أن يلقى الله غدا رجلا مسلما فليحافظ على هذه الصلوات الخمس حين يدعى بهن فإنهن من سنن الهدى وإن الله شرع لنبيه سنن الهدى ولو أنكم صليتم في بيوتكم كما يصلي هذا المتخلف في بيته لتركتم سنة نبيكم ولو تركتم سنة نبيكم لضللتم ولقد رأيتنا وما يتخلف عنها إلا منافق معلوم النفاق In brief he said those people who didn't, didn't attend masjid in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Abdullah al Mas'ud said, we thought they are munafiqeen because they don't come to the masjid. That's how Sahaba dedicate their time, their effort for deen to come to the masjid as much as they can. Okay, that's my time. I took my time. So we, time, so we stop here in Mawaqeet and the importance of Salah next time will continue. We'll go to Salah, the actions inside Salah, what makes Salah invalid. We'll talk about that next time, inshallah. We'll open for a question. I hope the question is in Salah first. We need to cover the Salah. I've just mentioned a few. I want you to complete the lesson. Yes, Bismillah. Okay, so if, if, if the situation like this country is difficult to pray five times a day, especially if you are at work or at university or mosque is far away. Yes, I said that the majority of scholars, they said it's not a sin if you pray at home. However, it's highly recommended. It's not a sin. Only Hanbali Madhab, they said it's a sin. Yeah. So if that's the case, if you are in work or at university, pray whatever you want. And when you are not at work, try to make effort and come to the mosque. Yes. Go on. <clears throat> Why you go to that, madam? Okay. 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 Very famous question. If you follow a certain madhab and you find that your certain madhab is a difficult in that mas'ala, in that issue, and you want to follow another madhab because it's more easy, again, you can't choose from madhab. Your wajib is to go to the scholar you trust. He can choose. Because when he chooses, he chooses depend to the evidence, not depend to the what is easy. What is obligatory for you is to ask him, oh, my scholar, this is difficult for me. Can I take this? Not you. Not anyone can, oh, okay, bismillah, Google it. Oh, that's fine. Alhamdulillah, okay, no, this is musibah. If you choose easy from every madhab, you come with a new madhab which no Muslim before follow it. Okay. Yes. Walaikum um, salam. Say for example if you are at work and you're praying Maghrib prayer and you're praying by yourself, do you recite Surah Al-Fatiha and the following Surah out loud or do you recite? Okay.
Okay. If you pray Maghrib by yourself at home or at work or any place, you pray Maghrib. Do you speak loudly, recite loudly? Yes, of course. You recite loudly. Isha loudly. Fajr loudly. Yeah. Yes. Good question. If the Adhan didn't happen in that mosque, for example, they just the congregation start, shall they stop the congregation and do Adhan again? Absolutely no. Because Adhan is a fard kifaya. If one masjid in the city raise Adhan, that's enough. You send me. It's highly recommended every single masjid. But if you can't stop congregation, to do Adhan again, no. You can't do that. Yes? What's the understanding of leaving Masjid after Adhan? There's a hadith in as Sahih Abu Huraira. He saw a man, when the Adhan is completed, that man is left the mosque. He said, Amma hadha faqad asa abal qasim. This man is go against the Sunnah. Ulama try to understand this, and that's one also. Ulama always take a hadith and do a deep analysis. And in, in, in short, in summary, if that man is left a mosque for a reason, Abu Huraira didn't like this issue to someone who attended the masjid, heard Adhan, and he left. You understand me? But if there is a reason, then majority of ulama said, yes, if he can do that. For example, he come for a lecture, and he has another lecture in another mosque in Salatul Isha. He finish in Maghrib, but because of Q&A sessions, they delay, they, he, he can't, then the adhan come. Yes, he can left the mosque and go and pray mosque, pray, sorry, salah in another mosque. But if he left masjid to go to at home, that's not good at all. So it depends the situation. But the meaning of hadith, you should stay because you should pray at mosque. If you are imam in another mosque or you have a lecture in another mosque, you can do it. Okay. Okay. For the young people, just one question for everyone. Okay. Go on, Ammar. Any what? Like any other reason, reason after, uh, Tell me, what was the example? Football? Yeah. No, it's not allowed. So Ammar said, Ammar, how old are you? 12. Ammar is 12 years old. He said, can I left Adhan, Masjid after Adhan, for some reason? I said, like what? Like football. No, that's not good at all. If you heard Adhan, it means Allah, it means the Mu'adni said, Hayya ala al-falah, come to the success. Okay. Yes. What about the other salawat? Ah, oh, in the mosque. No, no, in the in the weekdays. Where? Yeah, yeah, that's. But he talk about masjid. Ah, oh, okay. Okay. 
So the question here is, if, if we live in this country and we face difficult to pray at mosque and sometimes at work, some people, they can't leave their work. They have to do their best. This country, regard to my knowledge, according to my knowledge, they respect this issue. If you can say that I can go to for just five minutes, 10 minutes, just for salah, do it. If you can't, then we'll go to another solution. For example, if there is a lunch break, you can pray dhuhr and asr both. If there is no possibility to pray asr on time. So salah is very important. And there's a lot of solutions for that. But just make salah your priority. Yes. Follow the what? Okay. Okay. Can you go in more details in Mawaqeetu Salah in Sunnah? Okay. I don't think this is. In our time, many people, they just look at the timetable and they go for it. This is good if you are in desert of a few girl, but I will I will say it. Okay. Fajr time is start with Al Fajr al Sadiq. This is difficult in Britain to specify what's the starting time of Fajr. Regard of the environment of the of the weather in Britain. Difficult. Because if you are in another country or in Mauritania, for example, is very clear. You will see everything is dark, and after a while, you see like a light come from like cross like this. This is not the Fajr Sadiq, Fajr Kadib, and after a while, you will see light like this. That's the time of it. Very clear in desert, but here is very difficult. That's why a lot of issues. Don't go to those details. You just follow your timetable of your... Okay, and then Fajr end when sun rising. That's consensus of our ulama. Zuhur start when sun is in, in the middle of the sky. There is no shadow, no anything. That's the time of Zuhur. Till your shadow is like your, the length of your... Of... Uh, your length. Okay, your high. The length of your high when the shadow, when you now straight stand now. This is, you want to know the time of Asr is it start or not in the majority, not in Madhab al Hanaf. So if your shadow, you can, your shadow usually is 10 footsteps, sorry, 7 footsteps of your height. Everyone, if he counts seven footsteps, that's your height. Try it tonight. Okay, that's your height. So if the shadow is this, plus the shadow of al fay then that's the time of Asr. Madhab al said, no, double of that. Double of your shadow. You understand me? Okay, Salat al-Asr, there is mukhtar and if, if you don't have any reasons, that's just before Maghrib, half an hour, then it's finished. But if you have a reason, it can go till the Maghrib time. Maghrib time is very short. It's very highly recommended to pray it as much as you can very quickly. And then Isha time till the half of night in the strongest opinion. If you have a reason, then till the Fajr. Allahu Alam. Okay, yes. Why you pray at car? There's you, you don't need permit. Yes, you, yes, it's clean. Don't worry. You can pray on the road. Yes, 
because this sun is clean all this earth. Don't worry. It's not prayer mat. You can put your jacket. You can put that mat in your car. You can do many things. You can pray anywhere. Yes. No. Okay, Friday prayer will come with us, but because we are in the Mawaqeet, Friday prayer has two opinions again. Why I mention this? Because I will tell you this situation which always happen in some universities. The majority of scholars, they said the time of Jumu'ah exactly like the time of Dhuhr. Start like the time of Dhuhr. However, the Hanbali Madhab said, no, the time of Jumu'ah start before that. Yes, if, even the strongest qawl in Madhab, it's like Salatul Eid. After sun rising half an hour, the time of Jumu'ah start in that time. Why they said this? They have some athar of some companions who pray very early before Jumu'ah. So they said this at time. I don't go to, to the evidence that's advanced. But why I mention this, some universities, sometimes they need this. The break lunch time before the Dhuhr time. So they don't have, except this. If this is the situation in some days, that's haja, they can go to this. To the Qawl al-Madhab al-Hanbali. In that situation. But if there is no situation, no. Start with the Dhuhr time like majority of scholars. Okay. Mas'ud, Mas'ud, this is your second question. Wait, go on. Um, you know, Only one. Go on. You know, if you're in like work or school, are you not allowed to pray in the toilet? Because in the toilet. So you, the toilet is very clean. In which school you are? It's disgusting. People we on the floor sometimes. Okay, who say you can pray at no, I'm the one who, who say that, not a, I don't, I, I, that's not my responsibility. But did you <laughs> hear me say that you can pray at the toilet? No. Very good. You can't pray in the toilet. You can't. As you said, it's not clean. You have to pray in a place which is clean. Okay. Very good. Okay. Yes. How old are you? Um, eight. eight. Okay. Go on. The, the Imam is late. Yeah. Late. This is in Masjid or outside Masjid? In Masjid. Imam is late. Then, yeah. what did the Musallin do? They're waiting for Imam or what? The sun rises. Ah, okay, 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 okay. What if, okay, good imagination, mashallah. If you are in Salatul Fajr and they are waiting for Imam al Ratib, and by the way, the old Aima, they have consensus that Musalleen have to wait for Imam Ratib. There is Imam Ratib, pointed Imam, you have to wait. If he delay two minutes, five minutes, you should ring him. Not just to make Iqama. If he is the Ratib, Imam always there. Anyway, if he is late, till Luqman said sun rising, no, we should not waiting for that. Because Imam is just Imam, but if Imam want us to lose the Salah, then we say, sorry Imam. We have to pray on time. Okay, yes. Okay, there's no room and you want to play in the school. Pray. 
Okay, you can pray anywhere. You can pray in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the ground. Is there any place to play football? Yes, pray there. That's it. What if there is no, if what if there is no? One day, Imam Abu Hanifa, they said, hey, I'll come to you. Huh? Ah, that's the purpose. He said, you can just leave the school. Ah, that's the question. That's what behind the question. <laughs> no, you can't leave the school. <laughs> Be patient. And when you come to the home, shall I pray? But don't leave the school. Go, let's only go, but don't leave the school. Okay. They just remind you one day Abu Hanifa, they said that he is in his halaqa, and one old man with long beard, white beard, very nice beard, he come and sit in his halaqa. So Abu Hanifa that time he has a pain in his leg. So he used to just to, because he's just his students, he said whatever he want. When he see that old man, he said, I should respect this old man. And he said properly. And they said the dars is finished. That old man asked question. Abu Hanifa said, definitely it will be a very difficult question. It seems he's a big alim. He said, Ya Imam, what, when should the Muslim pray duha? He said, when sun rising, after that he can pray. The man said, what if the sun that day doesn't rise? Then Abu Hanifa let his leg to go again and said, I can sit, <laughs> whatever I want. Okay, so, yes, Masoud. No, it's just one question, just one. Go on. Salatul Nawafil is in the next lesson. Yes, yes, you can. This will come, inshallah. He said, if I pray nafila, sunnah, and you make you reflect upon that, and you come across one ayah, which is seek forgiveness, and you say, oh Allah, forgive me in salah. Yes, that's Allah in the strongest opinion. Yes, I will come to you. Uh. Sleep during Salah. Ah, okay. Ah, okay, okay. Just, absolutely. When are, when are you ready? Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one day, only one in his life, he was in the battle with his companion, and they tried to make a rest in the middle of the road, and they say to Bilal, you protect us, you wake us for Fajr. Bilal also slept. So they don't wake for Salah, even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, till the sun rising. And then, the then, I will come to you, then the sun then, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, okay, don't pray here, this is a place of shaitan. Change the place, have a wudu, have everything, then pray. Whatever you are ready. Yes. You, your, your teacher say what? Um, no, to not let you pray. Why he didn't let you pray? Because that's what happened in my primary school. Ah, okay. How old are you? Um, 11. 11, okay. Just in this country, you should go with your teacher and later you let your father to know and your father, he should come to the school and talk to your te teacher kindly. He will explain, inshallah. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, then in this case, just wait till you come to the home and then pray. Because you have an excuse. Jazakallah khair. Okay, yes. Five minutes and then we finish the lesson. Go on. Um, 
Okay, what's the hukum of the dua after congregation? We'll talk about that when we come to sunnah. But just briefly, if you do dua after congregation, you alone, in the majority of scholars, it's okay. The only problem here is if the imam himself do it every single salah and the ma'mumin make ameen, that's something new. But if anyone after congregation, he want to make dua, absolutely it's fine. That's a place, yeah. Um, tafadal. Can a man and woman pray in the same room prayer, for example, in working place with no any barrier or thing? Yes, you can. If this is the case, because usually you should do something. But what in my experience here, sometimes in working place, you just have something very. You can wait for women to leave or women wait for the men to leave unless the time is very, very limit. Then you can do something, for example, the men is in the beginning and the woman in behind. So like the Masjid of the Prophet ﷺ in his time, the men used to pray behind the Prophet ﷺ. And the women after that, there's no barrier. However, when he finished Salah, he said to the men, don't look behind you till the woman leave the Masjid. So he tried to do some. So if you can do some arrangement in that, men is be in front, women in behind, it's good. If you can let the woman pray first and then you come. If you can't and the time is, yes, you can pray. Yeah, behind you, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. If it's behind you and in corner, what's the problem with that? Yeah. Yes. Oh, Akbar. Big soal. Okay. Go on. And you have what? You don't have a? Mazidish? Garib. Ah, okay, okay. Oh, okay. Ah, okay. Very clever question. If you follow a Hanafi madhab and Asr time start late, and you don't have a near Masjid Hanafi. You just have Hanbali Masjid or Maliki Masjid. Can you pray at home? If you ask me, I will say, go and pray with Maliki and Hanbali. We are all brothers. To pray in the mosque, this is very highly recommended. Just go and pray the mix which is next to you. Yes, Rahman. Two questions, look. When he see the time, he say two questions because one one minute. Okay, very clever. Is there any any sutra? Okay. If you pray at university and for 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 instance a woman go and come across in front of you, she walking in front of you, and there is no sutra, what's the hukum? First of all. Sutra is very, very important, especially in this situation. If you pray in a university or an open hall or anything, try to make sutra. Just your bag, bring your bag, your bottle of water, put it and put the bag in front of that bottle, and that's the sutra. Okay, if there is no sutra and she, does the salah invalid? No. The majority of ulama said this is not regard to the invalid of salah. Salah is valid. The issue is about distraction. The woman can distract you. So they interpret the hadith of Abu Dhar, which is yaqta'u salat al mar Yaqta'u here, it means yaqta'u al khushu'a. That's the majority of scholars. Sorry? Me. Okay, closing us, that's coming, inshallah, we'll, we'll talk, inshallah, with Sunan and Makruhat. Yes. The last question. Yeah. Abdurrahman, you have two. Okay. Tafadal. Okay.
هي مس التحيات اه فينيش اوكي 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 that people just just count how many rak'ahs they 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 attend yeah but ah uh, okay then now they can count one because they count one one rak'ah after they they remind them and they and they stand up ah uh, okay they pray for rak'ahs yeah pray for rak'ahs If they start, they should join him. That's the hukum. He should join, they should join him immediately. And count one rak'ah, and then do three rak'ahs after him. Allahu alam. Hmm? Okay? Allah, oh, inshallah. Okay, inshallah. So this is the, I think this is one hour. So next time, same, half an hour. I will talk, and half an hour is Q&A session. And we'll go to through... كتاب الصلاة كتاب الزكاة كتاب الصوم كتاب الحج and then كتاب البيوع كتاب النكاح نرسل إن شاء الله الله عليه وسلم الله على عبد رسول سيدنا محمد